hi guys you're welcome back my name is Fukumi Mika I hope you guys are feeling good so the reason why they are burning Quran in Europe so let's check it out guys as a citizen of the European Union I feel ashamed and embarrassed it seems clear that our deceitful leaders and our Christian nationalist governments are shamelessly fooling the world. Yes, very cunningly. Western colonial criminal states present a fake and shiny inclusive image to the world, but deep down they are rotten to the core. Hindus, Jews, Muslims, the Sami people, the Roma people, how they have been treated and how they are still being treated in Europe should not and cannot remain hidden anymore. As reported by Deutsche Welle, Sweden has allowed another Quran burning to go ahead. Yes, the same Sweden that beats its chest day and night pretending to be a liberal and inclusive country. As reported by the BBC, a Quran was burned during a protest in Sweden and the Quran burning on Wednesday took place as Muslims around the world celebrated the first day of Eid al-Adha, one of the most important festivals in the Muslim calendar. As reported here, the person who burned the Quran has said previously that he believed the Muslim religion had such a negative impact that the Quran should be banned globally. But why did the police in Sweden give him permission? As explained here, the police had no justification for stopping the protest because of the action of an administrative court in Sweden, even though incidents of Quran burnings have increased in Sweden. Yes, you heard that right. The go-ahead was given by a Swedish court. Shocking, isn't it? And what was perhaps even more shocking was to read this. Sweden's Prime Minister Ulf Kristersson said the Quran burning was legal but not appropriate. This shocking act in Sweden led to protests by many Muslims and several Islamic nations around the world. Now here the question is if India should also come forward to officially criticize Sweden for this. After all, this tiny hypocritical colonial criminal state that is sitting on land stolen or taken over from the Sami people loves to act as a global role model. Here, just a couple of sharp remarks from Jeshankar should do the job. Of course, on this occasion, the man who did this is a person identified as Salvan Momika of Iraqi origin. But here it is also important to point out that this was not the first time that an incident like this has taken place in Sweden. Back in January 2023, Professor Farid Hafez wrote that far-right leader Rasmus Paludan is a serial Quran burner. In 2019, he staged public burnings of the Muslim holy book in several locations across Sweden, sparking riots in several cities, with dozens of arrests, injuries and damage to property. In relation to the vicious act of burning the Muslim holy scriptures, he wrote, Sweden's political context is different now. The ruling coalition depends on the support of a highly xenophobic anti-Muslim far-right party with roots in Nazism. According to Professor Hafez, book burnings have a long history in Europe. The burnings are usually public and highly symbolic, for books are always more than just carriers of writing. When enemies of the people are not available in person, book burning thus becomes symbolic murder or symbolic destruction. He adds, there is also a specific and storied history of Quran burnings. In recent years, key provocators have come from the far right, like Paludan, or from US Christian fundamental circles, like the evangelical pastor Terry Jones back in 2010. The professor explains that the far-right leader Rasmus Paludan was given permission by the Swedish police to hold anti-Muslim stunts in several cities in Sweden during Ramadan in 2022, where which he publicly burned copies of the Quran and called for the expulsion of Muslims. According to Professor Hafez, Ebba Bush, who is the deputy prime minister of Sweden and the leader of the Christian Democratic Party, even called for police to shoot more Islamists following violent counter-demonstrations to Paludan's Quran burnings. Yes, you heard that right, the deputy prime minister of Sweden. But hatred or discrimination against non-Christians and non-whites is the way of life in Europe. The Roma people face it, Hindus face it, Jews face it, the Sami people face it, and the list goes on and on. And all of that is made worse by police brutality and the ethnic profiling by the European police. In Europe, even peaceful protesters can face extreme police brutality, something that I have explained in this video. And yes, in the same video, I have also explained how in various parts of Europe, organizers of protests and protesters face various challenges. As far as Europe and Christianity are concerned, the ugly truth is that invalidating the non-Christian religions or calling their sacred figures or gods false or demonic is done openly in churches and seems to be an integral part of our so-called European values. So yes, 
right from the very beginning of one's life, a supremacist attitude and the idea that non-Christians are inferior are planted in one's mind. But Europe and Christianity are now facing a big challenge once again. Of course, this is exactly what is expected to happen when two religions seeking global conquest, expansionism and exclusivity meet each other. Hi, this is heartbreaking. I think it's still the same man I saw on YouTube. It's really heartbreaking. No matter what, this, this, I don't even know what to say. I'm just speechless. Like, lives are involved. Just imagine you born in the Quran properties, all in the name of you not agreeing, agreeing to their doctrine because of your disagreeing to the book. Why? It's so painful, guys. It's so painful. I'm just short of words because this is heartbreaking. It's really, really heartbreaking. I don't, I me, mean, I don't really see the joy in it, even though, um, to me, they shouldn't have taken the decision, no matter the reasons might be, because it's an only book. Well, this is where. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.